A start to finish Dub Nation obliteration saw the Warriors bounce back from a heartbreaking loss to the Clippers by beating the Atlanta Hawks by 23. 2022 Andrew Wiggins is seemingly back as the fellow Torontonian led the game in scoring in merciless fashion. The Dub starting five of Draymond Green, Lindy Waters III, Trace Jackson Davis, Wiggins, and Stephen Curry meshed to outscore Atlanta by 109 points when they were on the floor. Let's get into why what two-way Wiggs does for this team is so massive. Stay tuned for everything else you need to know regarding the Warriors right now as they look to continue their dynasty. The second consecutive 22 plus point game for number 22 was a 27 point masterclass that was produced on 70% shooting from the field, 50% shooting from three point range, and 79% true shooting. Wiggins was tied with Stephen Curry as a game's second highest plus 27, and tied with Draymond Green for a game's second most two blocks. From getting out in the open court by beating the opposing Hawks up the floor in transition with his elite speed for his size, to crisply isolating in the half court by creating space with quit twitch combos before hitting off balance fallaways, to draining spot up deep rangers in traffic with his high release point, to shock creating with his passing by breaking down the defense and making sharp kickouts, to forcefully penetrating the interior after using ball screens, to cutting back door and finishing lobs, to providing excellent help defense, Wiggins was doing everything the Warriors pay him to do. Andrew being that reliably distinguished number two option next to Stephen Curry provides an indescribably important amount of value to this Golden State team because without Andrew playing his best, while this now 11-3 Warrior attack has a ton of depth, including an all-time great defender in Draymond Green, there isn't anyone capable of being that number two option offensively other than Wiggs. I'll go as far as to say that without Wiggins producing like a premier two-way wing, this Warrior team needs to package some assets for a trade. Therefore, it was disrespectful how ESPN didn't even include Wiggins as a part of the best big threes in the NBA, instead including Brandon Pajemski in that top three for the dubs. Don't forget when Curry had a rare off night in game five of the 2022 finals and Wiggins stepped up by leading the dubs in scoring and rebounding with a 26 and 13 clinic. He was responsible for excellent perimeter defense played on Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown and the round before that, Wiggins was the primary defender for a Luka Doncic that no one could stop and did an outstanding job of holding the Slovenian sensation in check. It's safe to say Andrew was one of the top driving factors to the dub securing this dynasty's fourth championship and the franchise's NBA third most seventh championship with how he consistently got it done on both ends of the court to an influential degree. Speaking of inspirational, Stephen Curry may not be having an MVP caliber season, but at the same time as Steve Kerr has been able to get him some rest, Steph has been incredibly productive. Curry leads the NBA in points per game among players who've played under 30 minutes per game. That's a great sign for the Warriors in terms of keeping Stephen fresh for when it matters most and how he's producing at the same time. On another note, some of the most recent news from the Warriors is that DeAnthony Melton's ACL sprain will force him to miss the rest of the season as Melt will undergo ACL surgery, which takes around a year to recover from. The Warriors are reportedly going to file for a disabled player exception which allows a team to replace a player with a new signing. The exception would be worth a cap hit of 6.4 million. In six games, Melton was averaging over 10 points and shooting a solid 37% from distance. The Warriors wanted to keep DeAnthony their starting shooting guard, so that speaks to how valuable of a piece he was. Draymond spoke on what the Warriors will miss the most about having the former Memphis Grizzly on the team. What he was bringing to this team was great, so we'll miss that. Um, but what we'll miss more is his, just his presence around, um, his attitude, his demeanor every single day, always smiling, never upset about anything. Uh, just always bring great vibes. You know, he sit at the table with Steph, myself, Kyle, and, and Buddy. And we kind of have formed a good group at that table, you know, and just the things that we talk about and share, um, you miss that more. Obviously, basketball is why we're here, uh, but when you start to forge relationships, um, with guys off the court, you know, that always takes precedence. So 
We'll miss that more. On the table or? No, on the plane. plane. Yeah. Uh, we fly a lot. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you just said you just miss that presence more than anything. Uh, the conversations. But he's not dead, so I'm not going to sit here and act like he's dead. Um, you know, wishing him well and, and, you know, have a successful surgery. You hate to see a young guy in a contract year go through this. Uh, but I know the imprint that he's already left on this organization. He'll have an opportunity to come back. After finishing fifth in rookie of the year voting in 23-24, while dealing with injuries, Brandon Pajemski's offensive numbers are down across the board. Specifically bad, on the four three-point attempts per game he's attempting, Brandon's making merely 20% of those looks. Defensively, Pajemski's actually been stellar, so it's unfortunate we're viewing what he's going through as the classic, proverbial, whatever you want to call it, quote-unquote, sophomore slump. That said, we talked a lot about Pajemski last season, as Pods received a ton of hype as a rookie in general, but his veteran leader Draymond spent a long time talking about the pressure Brandon's putting on himself, among other things. A tough early season, he got hit in the face again tonight, had to leave, I guess. Um, what are you seeing with him and what he's kind of uh, trying to work through right now? What he's trying to work through is y'all fault. I told y'all that at the beginning of the year. Um, it's hard. And I, I, I don't say this from experience of myself. I say this from experience of watching people. It's hard having a great rookie season and then coming back and having the second year as good or better. It's tough. Um, that's why you've always heard of a sophomore slump. You know, it's a very tough thing to do. And I think for him, he's just put so much pressure on himself or the player that he wants to be and that he thinks he should be. And it's unnecessary um, because what he's special at is doing all of the other things on the floor. And when you put the pressure on yourself, like I gotta make this shot, right? Like, but there are some guys that have that have that pressure and they have to because that's what they do. If you don't have to have that pressure, I say that from experience, don't put that pressure on yourself because it's hard night in and night out to live based on whether you make shots or not. It's a tough thing to do, only the greatest can do it. And I think he's capable of becoming a really, really, really good player in this league. But why put the added pressure on yourself, you know? Um, why uh, beat yourself up? We believe in him, you know? The amount of pressure that he puts on himself with each shot is insane. And so I'm saying this also, so I hope you hear it. Uh, the, me, me and Steph talk to him every day. Like, who cares? Miss seven of them. No one cares but you. Like, you're the only person thinking about the shots you miss. No one else is thinking about it. But he kind of puts this pressure on himself of what he needs to be, and every shot means so much, man. It's, it's a soft Wednesday. And, November. That shot don't mean that much. But he carries that weight. And I think anyone who carries that amount of weight in anything, it affects you negatively. And I hate that for him. And so that's something that we've been trying to talk to him about. Like, stop reacting to everything that goes wrong for you. No one cares but you. Nobody else. You know why? Because what we care about is all of the other things that you do. So if you do all of those things well, and that can keep you on the floor, who cares about the shot? And I think he has to reach that point. Uh, but some of that is who you are as a person. And so you have to do that work as well. You know, so I, I, you know, we have the utmost belief in him. And he's been positively affecting his team. So I'm not saying he's in any way hurting us as a team. Like we're a better team when he's on the floor. But he's got to stop putting the pressure on himself that he puts on himself each and every day. Have you seen him? Has he said that, oh my God, I'm letting you down when I miss it? Have you, have you heard him 
basically have that emotion? Yeah, and it's, you almost want to tell them, shut up, man. Like, because again, none of us are thinking that way. Like, we just don't. When the pace that you bring to the floor, the crackbacks that you get, the steals that you're getting on the weak side rotation, the charges that you take, those are all great things. So if the one thing that you're struggling with is your shot, but you're doing five or six things, other things great, I think that will outweigh your shot. And he should appreciate that. Um, lean into that. If he leans into that, the shots will fall. But if he keep putting that amount of pressure on himself and thinking, oh, I'm letting you down him. I used to think that way. Like, ah, man, who cares? If I make it great, if I miss it, oh, well, I'm going to shoot the next one. And it's hard to get there. Like, I've done a lot of work to try to get my mentality there. And he's young, you know, so he'll learn that as he goes. But we have the utmost belief in him, and we need to have him to have that same belief. As the Warriors get set for a matchup against the Pelicans on Friday, let me know if you think Andrew Wiggins is the biggest key to the Warriors continuing their dynasty in the comments. This was your boy D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.